Okay, so today I'm going to be talking just, um, it's, it's all going to be about soul winning. So I'm going to like, I'll give some updates, I've got some Bible verses to share with you, and then some tips about uh, soul winning. So uh, that's what today is going to be all about. Just a reminder uh, about soul winning. It's good that we had that little spike after the soul winning marathon, you know, and people are sort of getting back into it again. So I thought I would just, uh, what, really what sort of drove me to talk about this today is I just wanted to get us all on the same page with Spodio uh, and or get us all on the same page as well with um, um, just, just, just how we preach the gospel at the door and, and stuff like that. So I'm not going to go really into depth how to give the plan of salvation, but I've got nine tips to share with you. But let's just go through the numbers first. So I, I'm not really going to do a finance update anymore. Uh, hopefully you guys, if I don't have you on Facebook, um, hopefully you're willing to join Facebook. If you're not, then I guess I can't get those updates to you. But in the TCIP family secret group, every week I post the offerings that come in. And then every three months, I'm just going to put the financial statements onto the actual website. So I don't, I don't really care if they're public or not. So if you want to know about that stuff, if you have any questions, you can always ask me, but it'll be on the website. You can go look back at all the different quarters. And if you're wondering how much is going in every week into the offerings, I basically tally up what comes into the box. And then I wait the week to see what comes in online uh, on direct deposit. And then I total that up and then I post it on, into the Facebook group so that you guys can see how we're doing. Right now, the bank account is about, I think about 6,000. I posted it today. So if you remember what the numbers were, it's about six, we're about 6,000. Uh, we had a lot of expenses go out because of the Sunshine Coast uh, Marathon. I bought a bit of equipment as well at home, uh, as well as um, we bought a lot of equipment for uh, Kevin as well. If you didn't know, um, we, we, bought, we basically um, kitted him out for his AV. So we bought, I bought him pretty much the same setup. So I bought him the same camera, I bought him a, a bunch of microphones. Um, he already had a tripod. I bought him like a memory card, extra batteries. I basically set it up for him. So it was just something that he didn't have to think about, right? It was already set up and now he can just start recording. So he has the same audio visual setup as we do. And this stuff's pretty expensive. I don't know if you know, but the camera is, was about 800. These mic I don't know if you know, but these, these Sennheiser microphones are actually pretty expensive. They're about 750, 800 bucks a pair. Um, and the reason why they're really expensive is because they're really, really reliable, right? I don't know, like if you buy like wireless microphones, sometimes they're not very reliable. They cut out and things. So this is like the entry level Sennheiser and they're really, really reliable. That's why a lot of sort of amateur videographers buy them. So, so basically we bought Kev the same stuff. Um, so we, I spent about about two grand buying him like all these AV stuff and also um, paying for my flights to get over there and things like that. So we took a bit of a dip, but we're we're still very comfortable. So it's about six six thousand in the bank account. Uh, so these are the uh, the numbers. So these these are the, I keep track of how many people go soul winning. So if you go soul winning at a time and I'm not aware of it, if you can let me know, that'd be good. You know, I'm looking at a few people. So I don't know if anybody else in here goes soul winning at a time. I don't know about. It's not that I'm trying to keep track of it. It's because I want to keep track of the numbers. I want to know how many people are going soul winning each week. That's all I care. That's all I care about. Like, I don't, if you want to go soul winning and not tell me, that's fine. You know, if, if you have your reasons. But I just want to. I just I like to keep track of how much people are going soul winning and look at the trends in our church. So I can share them with you on days like today. So um, we keep track of the head count, like like you know, every quarter. Um, the the blue line is tracking attendance. Right, uh, and this is just these are just the numbers for the three months July, August, September, and then that that line, that sort of line that you can't really see on the projector in blue, that's just showing like the trend, right? So you can tell whether the trend is going up or the trend is flat and whatnot. So it's good that the trend is going up, and the, and the reason why actually, I, just a couple of weeks ago, I was thinking that it wasn't looking that good because it was actually going down. But then we had the soul winning marathon, and then a lot of people got involved, which is great, and it just like kind of pulled that line up, which is great. So hopefully we can keep that going uh, as we go into the next quarters in this sort of year. So the red line is the soul winning number of people that go soul winning during the week. And that one's always a bit flat. We want obviously the red line to start going closer to the blue line, but obviously it'll never match the blue line exactly because the blue line includes you know babies in the womb and things like that, um, or, or young children. Actually, uh, actually the babies in the womb can go soul because when Elizabeth goes soul winning, I count it as two, right? Because <laughs> two people are going soul winning, two souls are going soul winning. 
Um, but obviously, the very, the very younger kids are, are not going to go, so, and they're counted in the, in the uh, attendance numbers. So that's uh, July, August, September. Um, if you want to see here, these are the numbers that I show from the very beginning since our church started. So it's great that the attendance is, is always going up. Not great that the soul winning is always staying flat, but hopefully we can change that trend as our church continues to mature and, and more of you become more consistent with soul winning and as you learn more and become more dedicated in that ministry. So this is all the way since the start of our church, which was the 1st of March, 2015. So in our third year anniversary, uh, I don't know whether you guys have any suggestions to do something else, but I kind of, I, I kind of enjoy bowling and it's good and it kind of gets competitive as well. So I'm thinking at our three year anniversary, obviously we'll have our Sunday here and we'll take our group photo out the front like we always do, but we might uh, do a bowling as well again and kind of make that our yearly thing. And, um, you know, may, maybe we can get some, I'll try and get some prizes going and things like that. So it's like, I don't know, we can have some fun with it. Uh, so that's, uh, that'll be March, around March. So it's usually whatever week the um, anniversary is in, that's the week that we have um, um, uh, the, the, the celebrations. Uh, Kevin and I did always talk about doing something national as well. So I don't know uh, if you guys have any ideas there, but I kind of like how the Sunshine Coast Soul Winning Marathon kind of worked. Uh, in the sense that, you know, we go there, we stay with some families, we have, you know, one day or two days where we go soul winning. Uh, and, and what I was thinking was, you know, with soul winning marathons, I was kind of joking about it yesterday, because yesterday we had a morning and an afternoon session. I guess the only difference between a soul winning marathon and a regular soul winning weekend is that people who go in the morning also go in the afternoon. Because when we went to the soul winning marathon at the Sunshine Coast, pretty much it was like a two hour session in the morning, a two hour session in the afternoon, which is pretty much what we here, do here every week. But the only difference is, I think, when you have a soul winning marathon, you're sort of committing to going to both sessions, right? If you can. Obviously, families switch generally in that scenario. And the other thing that kind of makes it exciting is you get to usually go with somebody that you don't normally go with. So, you know, when we went to the Sunshine Coast, you could go with one of the Queenslanders, which you don't normally go with. So, you know, Kevin and I have talked about it in the past, but maybe you guys have suggestions as well, how we can sort of do it. Because uh, I remember when I was younger and we used to have a national youth camp, the way we would do it in that denomination is that there would be different churches in different states and each church or each state would sort of take their turn hosting that national camp. So it, it kind of like spread the load out amongst these different churches. And then, you know, it kind of made it fun because you'd travel to a different city each time. Uh, so Kevin and I did talk about these sort of things and perhaps doing something as well with Ian Hewson in, in, in uh, New Zealand. So let me know what you guys think about that. Uh, the other thing as well is uh, I have emailed, uh, I, I emailed uh, Matthew Stuckey about the Philippines. So just waiting for him to get back to me about you know, what the climate is right now between our church and theirs and whatnot. So I, I, I said to him, if they're happy for us to be there, we'll come along. So we'll see what they say. But I know some of you guys were interested, but that's in April. So if you want to start making plans for that, um, it would be a good idea. But I will, I will let you know and I'll confirm once I hear back from Matthew Stuckey. So here are the numbers. I, I did this two different ways. So you can see that even though our trends are going up for quarter one, there's a lot of red, right? So this is the change between whatever I'm comparing it to in this column. So here uh, is the change between this quarter's numbers and whatever I'm comparing it to here. So I normally compare it to the last quarter, but then now that I've been doing this for over a year and a half now, I've actually got the quarter one numbers from a year ago. So I thought, well, should I compare it to the quarter one from a year ago or should I compare it to the last quarter? So it kind of makes more sense to, to compare it. Well, I know in businesses, they compare it to the, the same quarter, right? Because then you've got the same trend. You know, people go away on holidays. You've got the same number of people and whatnot. Um, I think the reason why I always compared it to last quarter because I just wanted to see if we were going up from the last last three months. So I don't know what you guys think is better, but um, that's the difference between quarter four. And that's the difference between quarter one a year ago, right? So the same three months, July, August, September, three months ago. 
You know something that's really interesting? That it doesn't matter what the quarter is or how many people go, because obviously it's a lot of red because we knocked less doors than last quarter. Because if you can look, it's quite a big drop. And it's because I, I can tell because there hasn't been a lot of people going soul winning. So I know when there hasn't been a lot of people going soul winning, like if there's just two people going every weekend or three people going every weekend, obviously we're not going to knock as many doors as when people are going multiple times a week and more people are going weekly. Because if you look at the total, total in this quarter, we only knocked, uh, well, we only did about a thousand, right? A thousand different pins, um, updated different pins. But the quarter before, you can see it's 2,300. So it's been a pretty big drop uh, in this quarter. Uh, comparing it to the quarter a year ago, not so much, but it's still a drop, which is not good, right? Because you should be growing. Every, you should be doing more every year, not less every year. But one thing that's interesting is you, you, if you look at the actual percentages you know, of the different statistics, it almost doesn't really matter what quarter you're in. The statistics are kind of really very similar. Do you know what I mean? Like even if you were to compare the last quarter we just had, right, with all the numbers, you can see it's like almost the same. 46% not home, about 20, 25, 20% not interested, 15 to 20% gave a tract. What's that, like 5%? So you know what I mean? It's, it's kind of very similar. So even though if you compare quarter one, this financial year with all, you can even see here it's very similar. 53% doors answered. Well, that's like 12% to 13% of people that will, uh, what's that? Long discussion to follow up. So that's people that you at least preach the gospel to, 12%. Uh, and then number saved is hovering at about 1%. And then number of aggressive is the same as well, hovering at about 0.5%. So that's about one in every 200 people you talk to is aggressive and still at about 1%. So that's one in every 100 conversations you have, uh, people get saved. So obviously that, that doesn't dictate truth. This is, these are just statistics, but it's always interesting to look at these numbers. So um, that's what that is. So that this quarter, compared to whatever this is that change. This is all since the beginning, right? This, I take the average of how many people go soul winning each week and that's 1,056 divided by 7.5. So that's telling you the, the people that went soul winning, they did about 140 doors each in that quarter. This is saying they did 160 and this is saying that 11, about 11 people on average since our church started have done about 2,300 doors each. That's what those numbers are. And then I just point out some key stats at the bottom because I think these ones are important. So total doors knocked is just how many doors in total that we have knocked since the beginning. So you see that's at just over 25,500 right now. Total doors answered. So that's just the number taking away the people that are not home, right? So if they're not home, you'll see that it's about 53%. So total LD to FUAS, right? So that's not, that's not to cursing anybody. That's just saying total LD, long discussion to follow up already saved. So, the, so what I've basically done is I've taken that stat, which is 11%. I've looked at all those numbers and divided it by the total of doors answered, right? So when you knock on a door and somebody answers, it's saying that about 11 to 13% of the time, that person will have a conversation with you, right? At least long discussion and up, right? So these statuses here, it's a total of those statuses divided by however many people actually answered the door. So I put these numbers up here so that people that are new to soul winning or you're a little scared of soul winning, you can see, because some people have this idea that everyone's just really aggressive and nobody wants to talk when it's really, it's about one in 200, um, but not interested of the people that answer you know, it's uh, of all, what's that, 24%. So one in four people won't be interested, right? But of the people that you do talk to, you can see that it's about well, one in eight or something, one in eight people that you talk to, you'll have a conversation with about that stat. So I think those, I think those numbers are encouraging and show that obviously different areas, it's gonna vary. And this is what I'm gonna get into when I talk about Spotio a bit, um, you know, why we use it 
because because one reason why is we can do this right and we can look at the stats and we you know we can get an idea I, I think it'd be interesting to see what areas are more receptive than others right because we can sort of we can segregate a, a, a suburb and say oh you know this suburb has higher population of muslims and this suburb is, has a high population of people you know that we have preached the gospel to or we can say hey this suburb has more people not home so if we're going to re-knock a suburb why don't we do that one instead of one where it's a lower percentage of people that won't home so we can use these numbers to be more effective and this is why i want you guys to buy into this vision right so that when you use spotio you don't just have this frame of mind of oh, Victor's just getting me to do something extra that I didn't have to do before. It's no, 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 I'm getting you to use Spotio. Yes, because yeah, then you can do something for me that you didn't have to do before. But also um, so that we can funnel the data into this and, and use it, right? And, and just be wiser as a church in how we do things. So how many people have we got saved in total? So five people this quarter. So not as many people because oh, we didn't knock as many doors, but... How many have we gotten saved since we started this church? 164. 164 people. Um, but that's not, only, that's not the only number I like to look at, just like I was explaining before. But, you know, we want to look at also total LD to FUAS, right? That's the total number of conversations. Because we're assuming that this number is the number of times we've preached the gospel to people. So that's why I have those key stats. Kind of like how many doors have we knocked? How many people did we get the chance to talk to, right? Which is total doors answered. And then we're looking at how many times do we preach the gospel to people. So since our church started, it's saying 1,866 people have heard the gospel in this community that, you know, they got a clear presentation of that gospel. And of those 1,866, 164 called upon the name of the Lord. So that's great. 